Hi, my name is Jason Webster. I'm Beck Cybridge, Practical Farm Research Innovation Lead. Today we are out in the field with Alan Williams here in Serra Gordo, Illinois. Alan is one of Beck Cybridge's 300 bushel challenge participants. Also with us is Sean Tyson. Sean is the local seed advisor in this particular area, and he's here to document Alan's personal journey to 300 bushel corn. So in this particular 300 bushel challenge, what are some of the things you're doing different than your normal farming operation? Any practices that are, you're, you're trying differently? No, we're, we're applying two different applications of fungicide. Mm -hmm. um, the Bex agronomist was really good to come out and help me take soil samples and we found out we're low as zinc, so mm -hmm. we added zinc. Good. Uh, we were adding nitrogen at four different applications and on top of that adding poultry litter. Tell us a little bit about how you're putting those four applications out in the field, what they are, I mean timing wise. Well the, f the first application was uh, anhydrous ammonia mm -hmm. and typically I'd put that on the fall but this year went on the spring okay. and we put 150 units of nitrogen on that application with no uh, uh, nitrogen stabilizer. Okay. And the second application was uh, um, 200 pounds of diammonium phosphate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had 36 pounds of nitrogen of that. The third was uh, put on 60 pounds of nitrogen and ammonium sulfate. Mm. And the fourth will be side dress, which we're doing right now. Tell us a little bit about planting population, seeding rates, um, where you're at in the 300 bushel uh, challenge compared to normal practice? Well, typically I'll plant 34, 36,000, somewhere in there depending on the variety. But for the Bex 300 challenge plot, we um, planted at different amounts at 34, 36, 38, 40, and 42,000. Mm. So we're going to che check, see how those varieties respond to those different populations. So multiple varieties, 34,000, clear up to 42,000. That's correct. That's excellent. Yeah, you'll find out which hybrids respond to the higher pops and which ones don't. So that'll be really interesting to see. So Sean, as a seed advisor to Allen, you're in a position to make different recommendations, agronomic recommendations um, out here in the field for the 300 bushel challenge. Is there any agronomic studies in Beck's Practical Farm Research book that helped you make recommendations to Alan or, or maybe help solidify some of the decisions that Alan has made for his 300 bushel plan? Sure, you know, I think that uh, we kind of use the PFR book as a, as a roadmap because we started this process early on mm. and maybe back in March and we found that that's what drives a successful 300 challenge mm. entry as Alan's done this in the past. So um, we used it to determine that we were gonna use a couple applications of fungicide. We like the nitrogen studies that we had. Um, we like the population, so that led us down the road to, to doing a population check. Right. And so mm -hmm. um, it's, been a, it's been a good experience and we're really glad to have Alan helping us. That's probably the first, the reason I started growing Vex is because they took the time and interest to actually look at agronomics other than mm -hmm. just selling corn or trays. Yeah. And I really found it interesting. And uh, it, they were doing many of the same things we were already doing as well. And it was nice to quantify that with having a third party, party do it. Be sure to check back in with us next month as we follow Alan on his personal journey to 300 bushel corn. We'll check back in with Alan. We'll see what kind of rainfall or what kind of weather patterns he's experienced out here in the field. And then we'll see where he's at with different products and applications that he's implementing trying to achieve 300 bushel corn. In the meantime, this has been Jason Webster following this farmer's personal journey to 300 bushel corn.